All right, everybody. Hello and welcome to uh, Claudio's and Victoria the Vegan movie night. Uh, obviously, I'm Claudio. This girl who's dancing still when the music's over is Victoria Blair. And then today, well, well, tonight we have an amazing guest. Uh, we have uh, AC Valiente, who uh, I've been friends with for a very long time. And he's also an anime nerd. He loves movies. and He loves walks in the park. And he loves chasing ducks in a park, too. Does he? I love yeah, chasing he, ducks. No okay, way. Well, we're, we're talking about Alex here, not you, all right? Uh, so, Alex, man, how are you doing? Thanks for uh, thanks for uh, being here with me and Weirdo. Man, I don't know how I'm going to follow up that intro. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm doing well, thanks. Uh, happy to be on. Uh, I uh, Yeah, like you said, I'm a big nerd. I'm uh, really into anime. I uh, love movies. And uh, I'm really happy to be on this, uh, this show. I, you know, I'll share my my passion for movies with you guys. So I'm, I'm awesome. curious to hear what you guys have to say or what you want to know awesome. from me. Awesome. Thank awesome. you. All Let's right. start with our first question. What is an anime? <laughs> uh, that's a good question. I mean, it's a, uh, it's basic. Okay. So an anime is basically a Japanese animation, mm. which is, I mean, it's basically like Japanese cartoons. Like that's the best way I could put it in a simple terms. It's, it's just Japanese cartoons and that's it. Yeah. Okay. So, like, Ben 10 is not an anime? No, Ben 10 would be considered a cartoon because it's from what Western. If, it's a Western animation. What about, like, Inuyasha? Yeah, Inuyasha would be more, uh, would be an anime because it's a Japanese show. Uh, I what think, about I think it is Avatar? Okay, that's a good one. Uh, Avatar is technically a cartoon, but the uh, creators of the show were inspired heavily uh, by anime. Uh, and they did borrow a lot of tropes from uh, from the Japanese side, so it's a it's a Western cartoon based on anime. That's the way I would describe it. Okay, it's an anime style cartoon. Yeah, do you yeah. like Avatar? Oh, I love it. It's great. Did you like uh, the the what is it? The seasons of Korra? You mean the Legends of Korra? Yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah, uh, personally, I preferred I preferred the original, but Legend of Korra had its uh, had its merits. I mean. Uh, not everybody liked it. Uh, I felt yeah. like, I felt like the, the the scale was a lot smaller. Like I felt like mm. there was much more at stake in the first one because, like you know, yeah. they're saving the world. I mean, actually, they kind of do that in the in the Legend of Korra as well. Mm -hmm. But like I don't know, I just felt like it was just more epic. You know, like it was mm -hmm. it, it was uh, more at stake. So what what about Avatar the series and then uh, the Avatar movie with the blue guys? Oh God! Oh Jesus! Which Christ. one is the best? Day and night. I would I would say it's day and night because Avatar, uh, the, the 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 anime. I used to watch a couple of episodes because I I really the only animes I watched were Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z and Gundam Wing. But then but then but then uh, but then Avatar. All right, I'm like, all right, cool. But then then when I found out M S Shyamalan, uh, he uh, he was gonna make the movie. See. I have to give you a bit of context here, a little bit. So uh, it was, it was our uh, Alex and I. We have a common friend. His name is uh, let's keep Matt. All right. Well, like, so so it was Matt's birthday, and we're gonna meet up with a, uh, with a group of our friends. And I'm like, hey, you know what? Avatar came out today, and he looks at me. And he goes, that looks like a shitty movie. So <laughs> I so I got us tickets to go see that movie. I actually saw that movie twice, and then halfway into this film. He looks at me and goes, nah, nah, this is a stupid movie. I'm like, I wonder when this movie is going to end. And I'm like, I thought it was like an hour and 40 minutes. Turns out to be like over two hours. All right. The only thing I remember for that movie are giant lizards just crawling on the walls because there's like a battle or whatever. And these three guys, every time they're walking, they're always doing like these kung fu moves. That has mm -hmm. nothing to I'm like, okay, whatever. But you see, and that movie was garbage. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna give the benefit of the doubt. I'm gonna go see it a second time with my, my ex-girlfriend. You're always like this. And then, 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 ten minutes into this film, my ex-girlfriend's like, "Ah, oh, this is a stupid movie." And I'm like, "Fuck! I paid thirty-five bucks for this movie." I'm like, "I'm staying till the end." I walk out of that. But you're movie, the, like, you already watched it once, and then yeah, you but, went yeah, with your yeah, ex-girlfriend. Yeah, you listen, paid thirty-five dollars yeah, to watch it again, and listen, you were like, "When listen, does this end? I don't listen, like this." Listen to me, okay? I, you know, okay. For me, I like to give movies chances. All right. Or 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 t or animes. I like to give them chances because the first I, I'd time. I like to. I'd like to think when you watched the trailer, you gave it a first chance, and then when mm -hmm. you went to see it, you gave it a second chance, and now that's a third chance you're giving it by going again. You spent sixty dollars on this. I know I did. 
<laughs> something I tells me, it. something tells me that Claudio wasn't intending on watching it the second time around. Exactly. So, oh, he thought that yeah. you thought your girlfriend would be like, "This sucks. Let's go home and uh, smoochy smoochy." Or, or during a movie theater, uh, you know, in the movie theater, the movie goes on. Okay, you're both looking at me as if like you've never done things. No, but slime. like you're, no, what you're saying no, is you're no. going to be watching Avatar while this happens. Well, I mean, listen, okay, <laughs> listen. That's why there's a thing called Netflix and chill right now, right? So, like, mm -hmm. hey, babe, pop, if it's bad, like, why would you want to associate that in your brain with pleasure? You know? Well, I mean, you know, you need background noise, right? Ah, oh, Jesus Christ, Claudio. <laughs> but yeah, no. So, <laughs> but yeah, no. So, so, so the only thing, but there is one positive thing I liked about uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender, oh. even though it was a crappy movie. I like mm -hmm. the camera work of. Uh, of the film, especially the panning shots <laughs> when all the extras are fighting, uh, then when they're done, it, it goes to the other extras and they're just standing there, like, oh shit, <laughs> it's our turn, it's our <laughs> turn, oh shit. And I'm like, man, I you know, I want to be an extra in those kind of movies, you know. I, th I think, okay, you, you may be onto something with the camera work, but I think the best part of that film, and I'm being very generous with this, is uh, the choreography. Uh, I don't know if you guys. So, like, I don't know if you remember the part where they're all like doing, uh, they're doing earth bending, and, yeah, and then yeah, like yeah. there's this group of like really professional looking uh, martial artists that do this like crazy uh, set uh, a set of moves, and then they just move a little rock, like yeah. just a little rock, <laughs> like after all that work, just a little like a little pebble. They call it the pebble dance. It, yeah. It's just, it, yeah, that's top quality right there. Like that, oh, that's man. great choreography. Like props to whoever organized that. But, but uh, you know what? No. I, hope, I, hope, I hope I hope there's gonna be a sequel. Why? Why would there be a sequel? Because who, you must who would direct it? Michael Bay. Michael Bay should direct it. So you know Michael what? Bay with you. You know what? If there was one guy who could follow up from a terrible M Night Shyamalan yeah. film, it would be Michael Bay. Um, yeah, I, it yeah. probably wouldn't be as bad, but it would probably still be pretty bad to be fair. <laughs> it's like, it would do it's all like, the dance, and then the rock would explode. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, was like, oh my, we gotta do. Like, oh man, what the hell? Is like, this pebbles moving. Like, oh man, everything really explodes. Good. The water explodes. The <laughs> and, and, then, explodes. And, then, and then, apparently, I guess you know. <laughs> and then you have, uh, then you have, uh, the, you have to have Dave Batista in this film. Oh yeah, and oh, Vin what, Diesel. Uh, what, oh, what, yeah. what, uh, what element do you think? He is? Oh, Dave Batista for sure would be fire element. Yeah, yeah, and then and then and then just to make it cool, he turns into the fire. He goes, "I have fire bending abilities." I see him more as a water. Uh, you know, actually, 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 you know what? They should make a, a fourth element. It should be. Uh, oh man, what's the, what's the most useless thing? That's so useless that people are like, I can't believe this is part of an element. Oh, like what a is fart? It? No, 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 gas. That's that, what I said. Okay, I mean, fuck it. Yeah. If you watch Legend of Korra, there actually is fart bending. Uh, what? <laughs> Vin Diesel should play that. Just saying. What? There's fart I, bending? Yeah, I hate to be the uh, but actually guy, but I am <laughs> that guy. <laughs> um, yeah, what happens is um, so like it's the last airbender, right? And airbending is technically like fart, like fart bending is technically like a subcategory, mm -hmm. and uh, it gets invented by one of his grandchildren in uh this in the God. sequel so uh <laughs> jesus christ fart it's, bending yeah it's considered like a pioneering technique in uh, in air bending so <laughs> it sounds amazing like if someone really annoys you you just bend your fart all the way to jesus their nose christ. you know uh, yeah yeah you Victoria. would do that all the time claudio well how no how do you know for well i mean because you're very me. petty all right i'm not i am i am not petty <laughs> i am i am, I am petty. far from petty all right you're just jealous of my non-pettiness okay, and sure. you think i'm petty wow okay you know what, victoria all right uh save uh save your disbeliefs for off the show all right veganism should be your your, your bending skills i'm bending the plants yeah, 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 yeah. I'll bend you. On. You're a plant. Uh, okay, so, uh, so sorry, uh, sorry about Alex. I know it is very unprofessional, but Victoria. It is unprofessional. Yeah. Okay, audio. All right, so uh, it's covering half of Victoria's face. So, Alex, uh, <laughs> do, do we do what is your yeah? Uh, so, what is your favorite anime? Um, of all time, did we cover this already? Victoria no, we talking. didn't. All right, we so just talked about the Avatar. All right, so Alex, what is uh, well, what are your favorite animes, or what is your favorite anime? Pick and then talk oh, about man. them. 
That's a good question. Uh, honestly, mm-hmm. I don't have all favorites. Like they're, they're mm-hmm. like one that like I absolutely like is my all time best. Uh, I maybe have like a top twenty, uh, if that would help. Like I've just watched so much stuff. It's like it's like asking you what's your favorite movie ever. Like I, I imagine The Arrival. <laughs> the Dark Knight is my favorite movie of all time. It's uh, followed, followed by Inception. Okay, that one, Inception well, I, really. Yeah, you just don't understand how time works, Victoria. That's why you find it confusing. I know how time works. Yeah, okay, relax. Hey, can you make Alex talk? Sorry, Alex. Sorry. So, I mean, off the top of my head, I would say uh, Cowboy Bebop, uh, that's Death cool. Note, yeah, uh, cool. Gurren Lagann. Um, let's see. Let's see. There's a lot of really good stuff that came out recently that was really good. Uh, I really like Devil Man, uh, Crybaby. Um, there's this I, I have, like... I have a soft spot for like the niche kind of stuff, like the stuff that most people haven't heard of. Uh, There's this one, it's called Kino's Journey. That's like super underrated. uh, And it's just amazing. It's really philosophical and psychological and like really messed up and gory sometimes. Uh, But it's also great. Uh, I also really liked uh, Helsing, the OVA. The original was okay, but the OVA is a lot better. Um, What else? I mean, I'm... I mean, I do like Marika, okay? It's kind of an inside joke amongst the uh, people who follow my channel, uh, fo- follow my, uh, my my comedy uh, my comedy group there. Uh, but it's not my favorite, okay? It's like, I love it, but it's, it's not my favorite. So. <laughs> anyway. Wait, wait, what's your channel and comedy group? Uh, How can so, people find it? Oh, well, thank you uh, for asking, Victoria. <laughs> it's a great time to make in a plug. Uh, so I, I co-run a, a comedy group called The Otaku Comedy Show. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're we're an anime be- uh, we're an anime based stand up comedy group, and we've been doing uh, shows for a couple of years now, and uh, we've done a couple of anime conventions, and uh, it's been pretty fun. So yeah, is it starting up again? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so actually, um, we haven't done a show since March of 2019. Uh, sorry, of uh, of 2020. No. Yeah, so we're really excited to announce that we've been we we've been uh, asked to perform at Otakathon this year online. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. Yeah, so we're really looking forward to that. Andrew and I have been preparing uh, a lot uh, over the last couple of uh, months, you know, uh, to to get ready. Uh, yeah. We have uh, we have a lot of things to to, to talk about, uh, to vent about because. Uh, let's just face it; like a lot of the stuff that came out now was really good, but there have been some stinkers that came out that were like okay let's talk about this so it's gonna be fun so you're gonna roast these people on stage and they might be in the crowd no no the anime the anime we don't we don't know like, i know we, but the people who made the anime they might be there you know um i mean maybe and if they are like we're never really we don't target any people specifically we just talk about the right. show you know oh, okay i see so but uh yeah i mean like i'm like we just we just spent like ten minutes smack talking Avatar: The Last Airbender the movie right? Yeah, but and like Shyamalan's not watching this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> He's too old. Yeah, he doesn't know how YouTube works. I see what you did there, Claudio. <laughs> he doesn't understand <laughs> the signs. <laughs> he he's trying to he, he's trying to go to the village. <laughs> To get the sign saying that he's old. Oh, 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 that's a good one. That's a good one. I'm gonna be at the nest on Tuesday. <laughs> oh my god! The best part of that joke, Claudio, was that you thought you were smart about it. Yeah, I am. <laughs> you know, <I'm> just <laughs> just busting <Yeah>. your chops. <laughs> Getting roasted by AC. How does it feel, Claudio? <laughs> How does it feel being a vegan, Victoria? Feels I mean, great. I, feels great. I, I feel I mean, healthy. I feel strong. All right. No one asked you. Uh, all right, Alex, <laughs> I keep going. <laughs> what, what was I saying? I forgot. You were saying that uh, you're just roasting uh, like how the show is. And then you were saying, for example, yeah. we, we spoke bad about it for 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah. We we're talking about Avatar, The Last Airbender, the movie, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, it sucks. Mm-hmm. Objectively, it's terrible. But like, mm-hmm. I don't mean any disrespect to the people who worked on it. Who, like, mm-hmm. you know, the, the people who filmed it, who like choreographed yeah. everything, who uh, yeah. the actors, like, it, you know, they, they put a lot of hard work into it. Unfortunately, uh, it, it had a bad director and uh, uh it just fell apart so okay. I mean, you know okay all right, right. no um 
I have a question for you though. Like All a right. lot of like anime is TV shows. Mm -hmm. What about anime movies? Like, do you think they're as good as TV shows? Like, what? Because I I tried like I watched um like Totoro and stuff. Like, obviously mm -hmm. that's amazing. But like, what else is there out there that I'm gonna like? You know? Oh well, that's a that's a good question. Um... I would I like uh, to immerse myself in the world and then the movie is just so short. Uh, there's another, uh, there's another, uh, um, animator who's very popular. Uh, I'm sure uh, maybe you've heard the name, uh, Satoshi Khan. No. Well, did he's you hear of it, Claudio? Claudio's probably so, heard of Satoshi Khan. He's probably heard, heard of him. Yeah. I heard him. So like basically, uh, yeah. So you're so so you 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 made reference to uh, Totoro, which is actually from uh, Miyazaki, right? They call mm -hmm. him they call him the Japanese Disney, right? Yeah. And uh, technically, his movies are not anime movies; they're manga movies, right? I know it's like he's What? very particular. Yeah, he's very particular about that. He doesn't like to define it as anime movie, uh, but they are they are like by most metrics anime movies. Um, What's a manga movie? Well, they're I based manga on manga was like the book. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I know. I, it's just a, it's a technicality, but I, I, anyway, um, Miyazaki is a great place to start when it comes to animated films, uh, like like anime movies. Uh, yeah. But uh, if you want to get into more serious stuff, like there's a guy named Satoshi Khan who made some really great stuff, like uh, uh, Paprika. That's probably the most right. famous one. Uh, talking like really like really cool visuals and like special effects and uh, like there's a lot of serious stuff out there right it's not just about like fantasy and 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 like uh, fun for the family like there's stuff about war mm -hmm. and 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 uh, poverty and and uh, like like overcoming difficulties and stuff like that like it, they cover some pretty pretty intense themes so yeah, yeah, yeah. oh that's cool yeah all right thank you Right. Yeah, now, now Victoria learned something new uh, every second. I did. Yeah, that's good. Uh, all what right. Mean so, every uh, second. All right, calm down, Victoria. So, uh, yeah. So, Alex. So now, like, what? Uh, I have it here, as you could see, uh, so people could see. What? What are? What are your least favorite enemies? Yes, the stuff besides, that made you angry. That you yeah. Besides saw Airbender, it. because uh, because Airbender, we spoke about like besides Airbender, like 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 you saw it, and you're like, man, thank God I'm not a vegan. I'm, you know, I could control my anger. And also, also your least favorite anime is Alex. Well, I can tell you what my least favorite anime ever was. Um, yeah. It's called Saikano. Uh, okay. I don't know if you've ever heard of that one. Yeah, no, it's, I remember Matt uh, talking to me a bit about that. Like, I, I watched it. And I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm pretty open-minded when it comes to watching new stuff. Like, I have a pretty low yeah. threshold when it comes to stupidity. And, and it comes to, like, like, one of my favorite movies ever is uh, Kung Pao. Uh, enter the fist right it's it's oh, so dumb but it's it's brilliant uh so like i have a high tolerance when it comes to that kind of stuff right but this 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 show like i just couldn't i i couldn't I'm, like it didn't it didn't make it didn't make any sense there was the dialogue i don't know if it was just poorly translated it's very possible but like it just didn't make any sense the story sucked and, like the characters are so uncompelling and and like boring And like, there's this whole thing about the world being at stake, and like, there's a there's a World War III going on, and uh, the main character is this like little high school girl who who was turned into a, a a robot mech of some sort, who like has to fight off the foreign powers and like defend Japan from invasion, but like in the process creates the whole world destruction, mm -hmm. and like she falls in love with this guy who like mm -hmm. hey, it was it was a real jerk. Uh, and he only realizes he loves her until the very end. But like she goes, to, it's just, I, the more I try to think about it, like the, the less, the less it makes sense. Um, and I just, yeah, I think it was the one show that really disappointed me because like I, I was taking, okay, believe it or not, I was taking a Japanese animation class at McGill as uh, an elective. I figured, you know, I'm a weeb, right? So yeah. I, have a, I have an advantage in this class. Like, I watch anime for fun. These guys are watching it to study it. I'm like, no, I already do this in my free time. So anyway, and the professor was like, oh, yeah, it's psycho. Oh, it's a great uh, it's a great series, pioneering in, uh, in its uh, visual effects and whatnot. Uh, I'm like, okay, let's let's try it out. Let's see it. And, <laughs> like, it, it hurts even more when you have someone who's, like, an academic who studies <laughs> anime 
it was like, yeah, this is a great show, and it, it's not. <laughs> what What about the what, what about the visuals? Were they good? I mean, it was it was nice, but at the time, like, I, maybe for its time, it was nice, but like, it wasn't very impressive by today's standards, by like by any means, you know. Yeah, it still makes Ghost in the Shell, uh, the first one, look better than this anime. Yeah, yeah, it, it's pretty bad. Let's just, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It, it was it was just more of a disappointment than it was like bad and it was just yeah, like i see yeah yeah they were like this is this is what we academics study this is top notch and you watch yeah. it and you're like i could i could name like hundreds of animes that are better than this yeah i know yeah, yeah. Uh, actually you know what alex brings up a very good point right because when i was in school and i took film classes and the teacher's like well this was a very good movie that i yeah. find is really good. and i'm like i'm watching this i'm like man like, I don't know what's worse, that this guy's trying to hype up this film or this guy doesn't know what he's talking about, you know? And then and then what's worse is like, well, then you have to compare it to all the movies you've seen. You know, he actually had a voice like that. So I'm like, I'm like oh, dear God, why? Claudio's like, have you seen Transformers? Yeah, so have you seen Transformers 3? <laughs> I'm like, you know what? Okay. God damn it. Ah, um, man, you know me well too well, Victoria. But yeah, no, that's, uh, yeah, but that's, uh, Alex, I know how you feel. But but did you end up having an argument with this professor? Or are you just like, yeah, I'm not gonna... did you raise your hand in the next class and you were like, <laughs> excuse me, I saw this pile of shit and it was shit? No, <laughs> you know, no. You know what's I... better than this pile of shit? My pile of shit. Yeah, <laughs> you just show him your stuff and you're like, maybe he'll find this inventive. <laughs> no, no, Victoria, you completely missed what I was saying, but it's okay. What? Oh, you he was showing him an actual pile of shit on his phone? Never what was mind. your joke? Can you please never explain mind. it? No, never mind, Victoria. If I have to explain, explain you a joke, no, if I have to explain you the joke, that means it doesn't then it work. it wasn't funny. You know what? Shut up, Alex. I'm sorry. Victoria's in her mood. Uh, you know, after her, her mood? boyfriend. Yes. You're t no, never mind. Now, Victoria, this, this ask Alex Were you going to say that I'm having my lady troubles right now? Is that what you're referring to, Claudio? If that's true, if that's what you want me to say, yes. Are you happy? That's now? not what I want you to say. I'm okay, not happy. Well, all right, good for you. All right, so Alex, so uh, yeah, no, so so what made you uh, what made you love anime? Well, like what made yeah. you be like what one day you walk like like one day you woke up, your back <laughs> went out, and you're like you know uh, I'm gonna like anime. Like how like how did it happen? How did you fall in love? They make it. You make it sound like who hurt you? You know, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's like uh, a clockwork orange situation, and then you just loved anime. <laughs> Strap me to a chair, open my eyes up. Like, yeah, no, uh, it was. Um, it was very gradual. My introduction to anime. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. It started off like everybody else. I was watching Pokemon, uh, mm -hmm. Digimon, uh, Dragon Ball, Sailor Moon. You know, stuff that was popular on YTV. Star Pokemon. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Like I was into the, that, that. That was my first introduction to anime, yeah. right? Like, but yeah. at that point, I didn't know what anime was. I just thought it was cartoons, which it technically mm -hmm. is, but not really. Um, but like, I really only got into anime a bit later in high school. Uh, I had some friends who were who were like really like hardcore otaku. Like, I didn't know what that was. I just knew that they were being really nerdy, and I was interested. Um, but then I, I was like, you know what? Eventually, I met I met Andrew uh, when I was like 18, and uh, he took me to my first uh, my first otaku thon, and uh, he's like, before you go to this convention, you have to watch uh, you have to watch this one show. You have to watch Death Note, and I was oh. like, okay, sure. And I watched it, and I was like, wow, this is great. Um, I want this. I want more of this. And where can I find more of this? And um, that that began my my journey my adult journey into anime mm -hmm. uh, or my rediscovery of anime so it was really death note that like that got me into it again and it was andrew i, I have to credit andrew for, for that like for getting me like for rekindling my interest in anime so i feel like death note was a lot of people's introduction to anime because like when you watch yeah. that you can't ignore the style after because it's just so well done yeah, and yeah. it's so inspiring too it's a great it's a great intro to anime definitely yeah exactly the plot anime. is great the yeah. characters everything is really good about the uh, death Note. asking a question can this be real you know what if it yeah. was real uh, you know? yeah yeah wouldn't that be awesome i mean who would uh, you put on your your notes in your notes if this was real yeah alex who would you put on your notes who would you put I alex I wouldn't put anybody on my on my death note. No. No one. No, I I, Not I, I even don't like Kim Jong Un. You wouldn't put him. 
I mean, look, man, like people are I, I, dying, Alex. Like, I, I just the idea of like putting myself, like holding the death note, and like having some like hideous monster following me every day until I do something stupid. I eat uh, apples. Yeah, I know, but like, I mean, Ryuk is cool. What yeah, fucking yeah. monster. Yeah, food, food. No, never mind about you know he eats souls, he eats apples. Like, what a he, fucking nerd this monster is. Yeah. You know um, what? If I, you know, uh, Alex, you know what? If I do ever end up doing your uh, the otaku comedy, I'm like, 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 I just want to make fun of this demon. I mean, he is the most useless demon. Like, what? there's no, there's no one more useless. This guy goes, yeah, I love apple. Like, who the fuck eats? I, oh man, I, I, Look, oh, there's Ryuk, like a whole. Like Ryuk, uh, you're talking about the character Ryuk from yes, Death Note. Yeah, yes. he, he's. Look, his whole shtick is that he doesn't really care about humanity and like what's going on. He's just kind of he's just kind of following it because he's bored. Like that's yeah. the whole thing. Yeah, I'm like, so, what are you? And then he supposed- doesn't have apples where he's from, so it's like yeah. a new new yeah, thing. Yeah, I'm for like, him. you know, but I'm like, you know, like fuck, I I don't know, like if, if you're a demon and you're just you're bored, I'm like, yo, how much free time do you have on your hands? Jesus, like fuck. eternity free time. Yeah, yeah I'm, like, I, I'm like, I don't know. He makes he makes the fee and the fictional character from WWE as well make it make that look more interesting than Re, uh, Re, uh, Riku. How I dare you that. say wrestling is more interesting than anime? Well, at least the fiend, <laughs> at least the fiend. Did fuck, they make well, any loses. wrestling movies? No, no, they don't. You know what? You know what? It's Victoria. not that good. You, you know, you know what, Victoria? Okay, when it's I see Riku. Good. When I see Riku, okay, I'll uh, I'll tell him Ryuk. about you, and then you can give him broccoli or whatever. Okay, listen. Okay, we all have the like names broccoli. that we want to give. Well, he'll he, well he'll like broccoli. Hey, I have a question for you, AC. Uh, what about those live action animes? What are your thoughts on that? Oh boy, um, <laughs> Alex's favorite movie is Dragon Ball Evolution. Oh yeah, yeah, it's my favorite. He loves uh, it. He loves it. He made me see it on true. my birthday when it came out. I'm like, God, where we yeah. were in the green room, he was talking about it a lot. Yeah, he goes, I go, he, he go, was he like, goes, I hope this comes up. He goes, he goes, he goes. I love Justin Chatwin as Goku. Oh man, no, uh, live action, like, no, it, it's just there are there are some that like are okay. There are some live action anime that are uh, sorry, live yeah, some live action anime that are okay. Uh, the best ones tend to be from Japan, um, yeah. because they're close. They end up being closer to the originals, and they're like kind of spin off. Like, what if, right? Like, I think the best one I saw, and I know, and this is being very generous, was a Death Note live action, but it was yeah. a Japanese one. Not to be, not to be oh, confused, okay. not to be Thank confused you. with the one from uh, Netflix. Uh, the the one that I really liked was um, it was L L Saves the World. So like it was an alternate, uh, oh. alternate like what if scenario like because like Elvis spoiler yeah oh. so basically but like he does but he kind of he he wins right like yeah he, and then after he wins against Kira he's like okay now I have bigger projects to do I got to save the world like for I forgot why or what who was threatening the world but like in the it, like anyway the movie starts with him like. Oh, uh, I put my name in a death note so that when Kira writes it, uh, he won't kill me because I'll already be in the death note. So he gives himself the maximum possible amount of time that you can live in the mm. death note, yeah. which is 28 days, I think, or something like that. So yeah. in the span of 28 days, he, he, gets, he gets tasked with doing something else. And anyway, so that was actually pretty good. It was creative. It was, it was interesting. The guy who played L like, really looked like him. Um, oh, cool. It was cool, but Elle is knew- hot. <laughs> yeah, I knew quite a few people around the time, uh, like when I was really into, like when I really started getting into anime, like who were all over that shit. So yeah, um, but uh, so you end up with movies like that that are kind of okay, but like you know, it's kind of niche and meh, you know. Yeah. Uh, and then you end up with stuff like the live action Death Note movie, <laughs> which is so bad. <laughs> I mean, like, they turn Kira, they turn Kira, who's supposed to be this, like, cold-hearted killer, who's, like, really smart, and, and he outwits everybody, you know, like, he's really, like, he's really intimidating. He's just a high school kid, but he's so smart that he's able yeah. to, like, you know, he's able to go so far, right? But, like, in the movie, they turn him into this, like, whiny little bitch who's scared of everything. Like, mm-hmm. it's just, it's so hilarious to see the transition, you know? And, mm-hmm. like... And, 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 and you know how, like, you were, you were talking about Ryuk 
uh, before. Like Ryuk, Ryuk doesn't do anything in the first one. So in this one, Ryuk is a real asshole. So he just kind of follows around. He, he follows Kira around. He's like, do it. Do it. You know you want to write uh, write people's oh. names in the book. Do it. You know, like... <laughs> It's, like, it's so in, uh, like, it, like the demon in Disenchanted. <laughs> I guess so. Pretty much. <laughs> yes, yes, that's right. That's actually a pretty good, yeah, that's a good comparison. He's like yeah. a real asshole, you know, like, yeah. but but at least at least the demon from Disenchanted is funny afterwards, you know, like, he, yeah. he gets some, like, if you watch the second season and, the, and I think the third one recently too, like, he gets some character development. You actually, like, I kind of, I kind of like him afterwards, you know? Yeah. But like Ryuk doesn't have any development. And <laughs> he could be replaced by an app. <laughs> yeah. And and there's a chase scene. Okay. And I, I have to I, I can't stress this enough. There's a chase scene between Kira mm -hmm. and L. After L discovered that Kira is uh, uh um is light. Like he already right. discovered that Kira is light and yet proceeds to pursue him in a chase. Like what? what? <laughs> Did he forget he had the death note? Right, and, and like I, I just, I, it just blew my mind. I was like, this, they just like they all took stupid pills, basically, yeah. and, and like forgot how smart the original show was. Maybe uh, the people who wrote this were high, or like they watched two episodes and they're like, I got this. Yeah, yeah. Or, <laughs> or, or, or they they, uh, they took the third vaccine. Maybe they took the third vaccine. Oof. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. true. That's very true. Huh? That's very true. Mm -hmm. But I yeah, know, uh, Alex, uh, you know, I, I agree with you. Like, no, because I remember Death Note, like Netflix came out with a Death Note movie. And I'm like, wow, what a piece of shit this movie was. And it was and it was voiced by, um, uh, uh, Riku was voiced by William Dafoe. And I'm like, yes. This is uh, so out of Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that makes sad. sense. That makes sense because he kind of looks like him. Nah, Which, well, like, you know, nah, well, that's your opinion, Victoria. You know, we, you, know you know, Victoria, we, you know, Victoria, we, we respect and not well, value your opinion, but you know, it's, it's, it's fine. What? Huh? That doesn't make any sense. It does. You just, you just don't understand. Because the guy was on his phone for the past fifteen minutes. I wasn't on my phone. I'm trying to open my my pill bottle that I need. I can't open. So I'm <laughs> sure that's why I'm, that's why I'm, look, that, that's why I'm looking. It's child lock thing, Claudio you can't get to his medication. I can't. I, can't. I don't think the pharmaceutical companies learn. I know. I f <laughs> but I feel, uh, like I, just, I feel like I just walked in on my parents arguing or something. Like, <laughs> what's going on? That's our vibe. That's our vibe. That's what we do. Yeah. You know. So, yeah. So Alex. So uh, yeah, all you have so to do is be like, is this my fault? Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. So, Alex, so talk to us a little bit about Fantasia. So, what are you seeing this year, Fantasia? Oh, yeah, what's going on? Okay, well, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I'm re I'm really looking forward to this one. Uh, I I've been going to Fantasia for like 11 years, mm -hmm. and um, this year there's they're they're really I mean, okay, they 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 pretty much focus on horror movies all the time, um, yeah. but like this year they're really they're really pushing it for the horror films. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm really looking forward to that. There's some cool stuff that I want to check out. Like there's a um, there's a movie by uh, what's his name uh, Phil Tippett, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Tippett, who like is a puppeteer, uh, oh. and he's been working on uh, like for for 30 years. He's been working on this film, uh, okay. like as a side gig while he was working on Star uh, Star Wars, uh, Star, um, Starship Troopers, uh, Jurassic oh. Park, like stuff like yeah. that, right? Uh, it's a movie called Mad God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I can't wait to go and see that one. Uh, yeah, no, Mad it looks God, really trippy. Yeah, no, Mad God is uh, apparently, I heard some reviews, and uh, it's uh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, now it's, I want to see it. It's, it's 2013, by the way. Yeah? What? What do you We're mean? We're in 2021. Yeah, yeah no, he Batman. just finished it, like, this year. Oh, he made, okay, no, because there's a short film that he made. And yeah, it's called Mad God. Now it's coming out with a feature film called. Yeah, Mad yeah. God. That that short clip was from the full feature, which he's yeah, been working yeah. on for thirty years. 
Yeah, so, yeah. Um, Kate is seem, yeah. you know, you know, for this, I imagine Gabriel Omasi and asked Phil Tippett, I've been working on this for 30 years. Yeah, <laughs> and then he shows him <laughs> and Phil Tippett just dies after. Uh, and then, and then Gabriel he just again starts to disintegrate like Voldemort at the end of Harry yeah. Potter. And then, and then, and then, and then, and then Gabriel Omasi goes, Oh, no wonder he didn't respond to any of my Gmail. I was like, ah, oh, god damn it, Gabriel. <laughs> Uh no, but no, yeah, yeah, no, that's gonna be good. What about uh, okay? So, what other movies, Alex? The are, are you curious? Yeah, to... well, what 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 is there? I'm just going anything over my that's schedule. not horror. Let's say that I'm someone like, who's for, extremely scared of like a horror uh, shadow. Besides uh, Victoria's bank account, yeah. There's a movie playing on August 12th on Thursday. Uh, mm-hmm. It's called Straight to VHS, and it looks really it looks really interesting. It's a documentary about a fringe film that was like super underground. Uh, made from Uruguay, so mm-hmm. like it's a it's a movie about a movie, and apparently yeah, that yeah. movie is so bad it's compared to like The Room. It, it it's considered to be like so bad it's good, right? So um, and and it's also a double feature. It's playing with the film with the original film, which is like very hard to come by apparently. So that's uh, that's something pretty uh, that I'm looking forward to I like I like that kind of shit I like I like learning about these like random movies that like would have never seen the light of day if it weren't for some like random passionate guy who really likes films you know so yeah yeah for Oops, sure. sorry and uh, and what about you Victoria what movies are you gonna go see I don't know yet I don't know I've been like looking at the lineup I'm not sure okay I really want to go though because right, like so this cool. has been a few guests now that are like Fantasia is amazing you should go and um i want to go and oh, it's going to be happening like in person i think right there's there, there's a few films. yeah there's a few movies yeah. that are playing uh playing in person uh there's the opening film which is brain freeze it's a it's a mm-hmm. quebecois zombie movie yeah. Yeah, yeah oh yeah yeah it looks hilarious it looks awesome uh oh, ta- oh, tabernak. Yeah. i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna go see it yeah uh, okay. All right. Cool. Cool. And uh, what else? What else is there? Uh, is that the only movie that's opening? No, there's a few others too. Um, there's uh, D, um, they do this thing called DJ XL Five, which is yeah. kind of like a compilation of short films. Uh, it, it's very popular every year. They, they they make a new version, a new edition, and um, it, it's a it's a lot of fun. So I'm gonna go see that. There's also the closing movie. Uh, which mm-hmm. is a, a full feature by uh, Takashi Miike, who okay. is a uh, Fantasia favorite. Like, it's pretty much tradition to play a movie from Takashi Miike at Fantasia, and it's just it's just only re- it's like very appropriate that they're closing off with one of his films, and yeah. it's um it's called uh, it's called the Great Yokai War, and it's a um it's a, it's a sequel to a film that he made in like two thousand and seven. Uh, mm-hmm. That nobody was expecting to get, but here it is, and uh, I'm really looking forward to that. Nice, right. nice. How about uh, Pig with Nicolas Cage? Oh yes, there's a, yes. There. How could I forget Nicolas Cage? Yes, uh, there's a movie. There's a movie starring Nicolas Cage uh, <laughs> that's uh, playing. It's called um, uh, Pig. No, what's it? Pig. No, it's not called Pig. It's it's got another name. Uh, it's called Prisoners of the Ghost Land. Oh, it's not the pig yeah. movie. I, I think he like I don't know where you're getting the pig thing. Maybe I maybe no, I missed that. There's a, there's a movie that just came out with Nicolas Cage where like it's basically like he's a chef and he's got his own pig looking for truffles and he retires <laughs> as a chef but he still has his pig and then someone steals his pig so he goes on a rampage to go find the pig. <laughs> I want to watch. This. Oh, like, and he's got like a full beard because he's like a hermit and everything. Yeah, right? no, yeah, yeah, oh my I know. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like it's like I'll never forget a second. I saw a trailer for it. It's like. Uh, John Wick, if you uh, John Wick with animals, like God damn! All right, yeah, he had a pig. Oh my! Yeah, I was gonna say it sounds like John Wick, but uh, with Nick Cage. I mean, that's yeah. something I would I would go see it. Like, oh, I, I, I would definitely see it. Nick <laughs> Nick Cage is awesome. All right, you just put him in a movie, and he's gonna freak out, and uh, you just watch yeah. him out for like 120 minutes. Yeah. And speaking great. of Cage, uh, I I remember seeing a movie at Fantasia like in 2011. Uh, mm-hmm. If I'm not mistaken, it's called Sorcerer's Apprentice, yeah. and uh, mm-hmm. it was it was co-starring Nicolas Cage as a wizard, yeah. and yeah. Uh, and uh, Jay Baruchel, who yeah. uh, 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 is actually from Montreal, apparently, mm-hmm. is yeah. a Montreal actor, 
and uh, he he actually he actually came to the festival like he like he gave a little speech before the show and everything. Yeah, and the first thing he did when he walked on stage was he flipped everybody off. Like that was his thing. Like he just Why? off to a great start. Yeah, because just... Jay Baruchel's a dick. <laughs> uh, <is> he... <laughs> I, don't I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, but yeah, no, no but no, making everyone what, comfortable but, to ask him but, questions. But, but, but the Sorcerer's Apprentice was, uh, you know, was, uh, it was a good Jerry Brockheimer movie. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. The only thing I remember that movie is Nicolas Cage is just coming in and he goes, he'd be a curse. I'm like, oh, god damn. All right. <laughs> now, now I'm interested how this movie is going to be, yeah. you know. But uh, yeah, no, Nicolas Cage, as I mentioned, just put him anywhere. He's going to be good. Like, for example, on, on Netflix, I saw the season of The Witch. Ah, oh, man, it was him and Ron Perlman set in medieval times. So they have to transport a, 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 a girl who, who's possessed. And then everyone's like, uh, if um, whoever this, this woman will be surrounded by men and she will turn these men into wolves. And then Nicolas Cage has the best line. He goes, She'd be a curse amongst men. I'm like, oh fuck, all right. And then my man, they oh man, they mean business with this movie, you know. But that, uh yeah. that is a terrible Nicolas Cage impression, by the way. That's just so bad. <laughs> well, no, like, that's how he spoke <laughs> in the movie. It's like it's like uh because it started off in the war, uh, the war in AD, right? Uh, it was uh it was a crusades, and he goes, I'm going to escape tonight. During the Crusades, I'm like, you really want it? Why? Like, why? Like, like, like Nicholas Cage looked drunk and bored throughout this entire film, and Ron Perlman tried to give his best, you know. And because, of course, it's Ron Perlman being Ron Perlman, but uh, yeah. you know, but I know Nick Cage. Oh man, do I want to work? I want to. I want to work with him and Tommy Wiseau. I have a question for you, Claudio. Speaking of uh, Ron Perlman, what did you think of the uh, reboot of Hellboy? Oh. Uh, did you like that one? Did you? Did I like. You... Okay, so I have my pros and cons about this. All right. Yeah. So my pros is David Harbour did a really good job as Hellboy. I find he did a really good job. Uh, the action was good. The con that I have. Oh, also before I go back to the con, sorry. Ian makes Shane look drunk throughout the entire film. He sounded drunk. And then the con of this movie, I'm like, why? Why can't you just make Hellboy three? You know. Because if you watch the opening of the this Hellboy, hmm. there's a there, there's a moment of where because I'm like, watch this is gonna be like a timeline film, and you see the enemy from the first Hellboy when he uh, when they're shooting something into space, right, uh, of like how Hellboy is created, uh, like how sorry he came to Earth. I'm like, okay, so if they made a timeline film. That would have made sense because also uh, at some point in the graphic novels, the two Hellboys meet. Okay. So if they did that, cool. But then they redid it. And, you know, in films, I love, you know, gore. You know, I love, uh, you know, I love obviously action. I love when heads come off. But this one was unnecessary violence. And the story was just what. All right. So they had to take that. Mil- writing a letter to the producers. Yeah. Too violent. And then, and then, and then Mila Jonovic was the bad guy. Uh, she was the antagonist of the film. Mm. And I'm like. All right, you really didn't do much in this film. What's her purpose? Like, ah, I'm, 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 I'm taking revenge on Earth because you killed me like billions of years ago, and then, uh, and then you find out like the most dumbest twist. Can I, can I, uh, can I give it away? Nobody's gonna watch it, so go it's for it. It's your podcast. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, so, so Hellboy is related to King Arthur. Because that dumb. That's dumb. yeah. Because at the end, because <laughs> at the end, at the there's end, there's no like, need for that. I yeah, know. I at the end, he, they're fighting like they're fighting a monster, but then there's like a sword that magically appears. And the sh- and first of all, the sword. I think the sword has Parkinson's and stuff because it was like it was like this dangling. It's supposed to vibrate. Yeah. Anyways, so then after that, uh, Hellboy takes a sword, and then the enemy chains like this is a sword of a shell. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like man, like. <laughs> What the hell? You know, Ian McShane is cool, but in this movie, it was just it showed that he needed a paycheck because he could pay off his Lamborghini. Um, because he came out with John Wick two and a few other movies at that time. But uh, no, but no, but now the Ian McShane's like, take the sword, son, and raise a sword and fight this evil. I'm like, motherfucker, can you just get that sword like midway through the movie? He takes the sword and he goes, "This is the sword of Excalibur." I'm like. But what he that- just used a gun? Yeah, I, yeah, because Hellboy has a really good, awesome gun. 
and yeah. then yeah, and then like, the and then, and then the sword breaks like you know not even the first minute into the film I'm like what a useless problem who, like who wrote this film you know i was disappointed i was you know no you know i'm like i'm like why am i watching this oh yeah i could see it for free but like why you know <laughs> it was two hours and one minute god damn it, <laughs> it are fun. you gonna watch it again no well i mean you know but uh man like jesus christ what about you alex what did you think of hellboy oh boy um I yeah, I I'm kind of mixed about it. I yeah, like I said, like you said, uh, Harper was really good as Hellboy. I felt like if it wasn't for Ron Perlman, he would probably be the next best. Uh, but but the film itself was pretty bad. Uh, <laughs> I, it, yeah, the the whole like um, the whole like uh, he's related to King Arthur was hilarious and un completely unexpected and un unnecessary. Uh, the part that made me laugh out loud in the theater was uh, Merlin, who just came out of nowhere. <laughs> it was so, it was so dumb. Uh, wow, man. Yeah, it could, like I, I'm just like, I wonder what Del Toro would would say about this because like, <laughs> like he he's uh, done so much better than that. Like he, he's probably like. Like, I could have done so much better. <laughs> yeah, like 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 in the first Hellboy. All right, it's cool yeah. that during World War II he came from space. Uh, no, from they opened a, a portal. He came from hell. All yeah. right, that's cool. All right, or at least if they're gonna do a cliche story of like this at full moon, this man yeah. turns into the devil. All right, cool. Yeah. But the fact that you're you know saying this guy's thing is a son of King Arthur, I'm like, man, but I want to write a shitty movie. Fun, fun fact about Del Toro, actually, um, he's a huge weeb. Uh, yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah, he's a huge weeb. Uh, I learned about it at Fantasia, and uh, yeah, because like he actually came to Fantasia one year to uh, talk about his. Um, he gave like a master class on uh, puppetry and on like yeah. you know special effects and stuff like that. And uh, at the time, at the time, Pacific Rim had just come out. That was a great movie. And oh man, it's so good. And like you could definitely tell he was inspired by like the, the like Godzilla and like yeah. the kaiju movies, you know, like kaiju yeah. is like basically giant monster. Yeah. Uh and like he, he yeah, apparently he's a huge he's a huge weep. He likes to watch uh, Gundam and, and, and that kind yeah. of stuff. So it, it's just happy to see I'm just happy to see another fellow weeb uh yeah. who made it so big, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then and then you have Pacific Uprising and Pacific Rim Uprising, and I'm like <laughs> why why but yeah no but the first pacific room was really good because you know it, it, it captured what was supposed to be a stupid i you know robots fighting monsters you know transformers if they do it properly they should learn from pacific rim so you can actually have a good watchable movie that is true that I stopped true. watching after the second one. I just couldn't uh, do it anymore. Oh, uh, oh yeah, no, no, no. Now, now, now the seventh one's a reboot. Now I'm like, oh, <laughs> okay. Oh, and it's set, and it, and it's set in the nineties because of oh. the six feet uh, of the uh, gigantic Optimus Prime, uh, Primal, and the uh, and the uh, and all the beasts, uh, beast wars are, are running through the town, and they're all destroying cars. Oh, my God, that's beautiful. That's 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 so beautiful. But yeah, that's it. So, uh, Alex, uh, anything uh, you'd like to add? Uh, Your plugins. I mean, oh Do you have yeah. Shows. Yeah. Do you have any <laughs> so, shows? <laughs> uh, sure. Uh, so yeah, I have my. Uh, uh, we have the Otaku Comedy Show coming up on um, August twentieth or, okay. or the twenty first. We still haven't confirmed exactly. That's my birthday. Yet. Okay, no one asked awesome. you, Victoria. God damn it. Yeah, sorry. So, so, uh, sorry, Alex. We're performing at the convention online, so you can come and watch us there. Uh, I'm also going to be doing stand live stand-up comedy for the first time since March of last year. Wait, uh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, Alex. Sorry to cut you off. Yeah, yeah. He was you ranting did, up for something. No, no. You did the comedy nest because this comes out Thursday night. It came out tonight. So ah, you did. well. Uh, when you when you guys have watched this, uh, I will have performed for the first time since March of 2020. <laughs> Congratulations! <Good job. laughs> Thank you, yeah, Alex. You did a good job. You are Alex, so good. You I heard many good things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank that's you. True. That's cool. That's cool, Alex. And then you're gonna be with us. You're gonna be with us in two weeks at the uh, Dirty Four Open Mic. Hell yeah! Looking yeah, forward to yeah, that. 
Yeah, yeah. it's going to be really good. I think and I'm going to be hosting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Victoria, she's going to be hosting. And, uh, you know, Alex is going to be there. We're all going to be there. We're going to laugh at Victoria because she forgot her stuff. But anyways, mm -hmm. that's I will. So, I promise. Uh, yeah, okay. All right. So, uh, even Victoria, what about you? Do you have anything you're doing this week besides Thursday? Um, what am I doing? No. Okay. Wait, right. I'm going to be at the deluxe, uh, open mic on August 8th. Oh, okay. Uh, so you guys should definitely come to that. It's a real open mic. So it's like people try their jokes for the very, very first time. Um, it's got a nice ambiance. I really like it. It's hosted good. by Asher. So good, you guys good. like this. Also, we got the quiz horrors going every Tuesday. And mm -hmm. this is happening next week. Again, next week. Yeah. So tune in for that. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, Dirty Four, uh, we were not on this past Monday, mm -hmm. uh, episode 62. But we're going to be back for episode 60 yeah. because we're doing a live. People like it when we're live. They don't like it when it's pre recorded because it does don't. not have the same. So, ladies and gentlemen, this has been uh, our time. Alex, thank you very, very much Thanks, again. Alex. You're going to be thank back you for on. Me. Hey, no problem, man. We're going to, you know, we're going to see you live and uh, you're going to kick ass. And mm -hmm. uh, Alex, I already know. saw him live and he did kick ass. I know, uh, Alex, when you have the final date, let us know so we could post it. Uh, so yeah. we could post it here so people sure. can try to get links to come and see you and Andrew Cardazzi. Yeah, yeah, sure. All That'd right, yeah, all right, all right, everybody, have yourselves a good day or night and see you next week. Bye, everybody. Love you. <laughs>